Uh, hi, my name is Guga or Kangmi, and then uh, uh, I've been here for a while. I missed the last two YEPC Asia. I'm very sorry. And the, the <laughs> so that's for some reason. Uh, so this this topic and might be a little bit too vague that it does not tell what I'm, what I'm going to talk about. But we will get there. So bear with me for a while. So uh, so yeah so. The reason that I wasn't here for the past two years is that I moved to a different country. I was coming from Taiwan before. Now I'm coming from the Netherlands. I work for the company called Booking.com. We are a travel agent. So I am officially a travel agent at this point. Uh, so which means I, if you want to travel, you can kind of come, come to me. But if you come to me, that would be very inefficient. Uh, because what my real work is I still write programs. I, Right, Pro program JavaScript is and a little Java. I'm also doing uh, recruitment interviews for them. Okay. So booking. So if you don't know yet, uh, this company is a travel agent. We do only online hotel reservation. And by the way, we are hiring. Uh, we have a lovely recruiter Fiona here. Uh, talk to her if you ever feel interesting to be interviewed. So great. So uh, we are a travel agent, but we have a lot of byproduct. We, we make a lot of things in order to make you guys book hotel very easy. And this is a, short, a very short list of the recent fancy things we make. Uh, so I would like to go through some of them in this talk. The, fir the very first thing that I would like to talk is uh, it's something we call hype. So, uh, hype is some word that I made up. Uh, uh, it's it's a it's a fake word, or uh, it's word it's a word that I make it look something like a Dutch word. Uh, so so uh, it's a it's a HTTP client. Uh, it's entirely written in Perl, very short, 200 lines of Perl, and it has more documentation than the code to to document what it does. Uh, you can use this uh, HTTP client to talk to some, H, uh, H, some server that's generally working with HTTP 1.1 and because it, rely, it relies on having a persistent connection, uh, which means you don't have to open and close the connection all the time. And it, uh, because it's thin, it does not do much. It does not do like all these things. There's no location header, no content encoding, like a lot of things in HD 1.1. And it really, uh, it's a very low level API. You, when you use it, uh, you need to understand a little bit of HTTP protocol to use it properly. Okay. Um, uh, so this is a very, like this is the, the smallest example I can give you. So you will just call hike request with all the parameters over there, and well, and it, it, it makes the request. Uh, it sends the request over the network, and then the result is back synchronously. So okay, that, it's a short example. But so the reason um, why I'm making this is it's because we use Elasticsearch. You might heard Elasticsearch this morning. Uh, so, Booking.com also uses Elasticsearch internally, and uh, so when you look at one Elasticsearch response, you will notice that uh, Elasticsearch always produces uh, only two HTTP header. So, if you know some HTTP details, you will know that HTTP 1.1 has something like 30, 40 headers with all different functions. And Elasticsearch only use two of it. Like so, you really don't need to handle a lot of things if you only talk to Elasticsearch. So, which means, uh, uh, for for use case like Elasticsearch, uh, we can build uh, something very specific for it. And it turns out, uh, this this specific uh, technology can be also used in a lot of different ways. So we figure that uh, hike is something we can be 
that can be used to talk to data servers. So if you have a database, the database server, that just use HTTP as a transport layer for whatever reason, then Hike might be okay for you. And so that, that would include some buzzwords like CouchDB, MongoDB, et cetera, et cetera. So, but the one important point is that um, um, like you, need to, you need to be able to control the server. So if you cannot, you, if, if this server is outside of your control, and like you cannot shut down or tweak the server, then you probably should not use Hype to talk to it. Okay, so, so um, I, I show you some use cases, and you might wonder that if it is this troublesome to even use it, then why use it at all? So this is one of the very good reasons uh, to use it, because uh, in a very simple benchmark, uh, Hike is 10, 12, 12 times faster than LWP. So LWP is, uh, if you don't know LWP, it is a state-of-the-art implementation uh, of HTTP client library in the Perl's uh, toolkit. So pretty much, uh, like if you try to Google how do I do HTTP requests in Perl, you will find LWP like very easily. <clears throat> but I like, so it's a full implementation. It is. Uh, it's compatible for HD 1.0 and HD 1.0, and probably even earlier HD. Um, so it has its own technical debt. Uh, uh, debt. So it has its own legacy uh, history to take care of. So, but if we can do something that is so specialized to talk to like only the thing you need to talk to, then we can actually squeeze a lot of performance out of it. So this is the, this ten time is just one example. There's another uh, benchmark uh, provided by this guy named Martin Evans. So he benchmarked a few uh, different HTTP user regions as long as uh, uh, with Hike. So, oops. So you should notice that Hike is uh, in, in his benchmark. Hike even beats Curl. If you know Curl, it's an HTTP library written in C. So pure pro height can, in, in some special case, can be can outperform some library written in C. So, the, and the, and again, the reason this can be happening is because that it is so specialized for the purpose that uh, that uh, it does not do a lot of things that's not necessary. That's a lot of negation in one sentence, but. Uh, Okay, so, and the, the reason is, why, why, why then? So, so, like we have this already six, seven HTTP client implementation, why not a new one? So, so, oh shit. Okay, ooh, they don't translate my swear word. <laughs> so, yeah. so, anyway, so, uh, so if, we, if we try to understand HTTP a little bit, that you'll, you'll find that it's actually not so easy to have a very short description of what HTTP does. This is like the shortest part I can digest from a wiki page. So, so it does, it's a protocol that does a lot of things. So other than just transmit the data, it also takes care of the situation where the network is very congested, like there are so many connections to a server and then, or for example, in a Yassi with a thousand attendees, everybody is trying to connect into the same place. There's so many connections, and HTTP protocol actually try to handle all this in one portal. So that is good because it well it makes you or it makes you be able to surf the web in a very you know uh, high traffic volume situation, but. When we're talking to Elasticsearch, uh, it's our application talking to our database. If the network is congested between these two server pools, you probably have a much bigger problem than 
you know, trying to make a packet through. Like, like why? Like the reason for make that the network is congested is probably in somewhere else. Somewhere else. Maybe you really need to install it, install some bigger, bigger, uh, nicer cable, or I don't know. Maybe you need to move the server to a, a closer location or something. So, oh yeah, I just talked about this. So, <laughs> so HTTP is more. Of, it's a very generic purpose. So yeah, it's a very generic purpose. That's very important. It's also well understood. That's good. And oh yeah, it also takes care of streaming and non-streaming. It takes a lot of cases. So it's very generic. And so, so and it, it becomes very. So for me at least, it becomes very doubtful that uh, like why do database people just choose HTTP? As their trans as their trans transport layer, like why why isn't something else chosen? Why HTTP? Um, well, if you're a database server, do you really need streaming? Well, maybe maybe not. Do you? But do you really need to serve partial content? Like HTTP, you can grab you can download partial content. But as a database, nah. And does database server really? Can see we need to handle like when the network is very congested. Like I, I don't know. Like I would I was I would generally assume that if my database server is put into an environment where there are a lot the network traffic is generally very congested, that's a very bad thing to do for a database server. Like it would just not be able to, to get content out of it. And proxy? Do, why why do I need a proxy just to connect to my database? I don't need it. So, and content type or encoding, like, that's just making things very complicated. So, I should be just able to get my data out in one or one, uh, as one type, like text or binary, or in just one or two certain encoding that's very easy to handle. So, a database server doesn't really need a lot of all these things that's given in HTTP. And Elasticsearch happens uh, also, don't use them. So, so again, the, so that's why we wrote this hype so that to avoid doing unnecessary work, doing a few as few things as possible, and to uh, make it so special then make it so performant. Yeah. And the next thing uh, is a deploy tool that we call the deploy. It's a deployment tool that is also very specialized for Brooking.com infrastructure. Um, uh, in, the, in our infrastructure, we have about 30 different server roles. Uh, that are 30, a lot of different types of server that have a lot of different rollout uh, process. But with Git deploy, we are able to uh, simplify the, the deploy procedure so that a developer, they only have to type the same command, and then the rest happens automatically. So what happens underneath is the git deploy script figures out, oh, I'm in a web server, uh, I'm rolling out a web server, so I do this kind of thing, and the other server, the, and the other server will maybe, oh, I'm, I'm rolling out an uh, office server, so I'm, I'm doing this and this a little bit differently. So it's a, so, yeah, so, so with this tool, we are able to, to perform at least, I think, 30 deployments per day. Like, I don't really count, but 30 is, sounds about right. Probably more, yes. And the next thing, Serial. Serial is also a, a, a Booking.com invention, I can say that, that is a data serialization format. I have a typo here, a, a serialization format uh, that we invented. And it, ha it also has its own specialty. That's uh, it's it's very space efficient, which means it takes very really okay. it takes very few space to store the same thing. So here's a simple chart. You can basically see that uh, this chart is for space. You can basically serial gets the the, the, the writer part that has always the smallest portion of that used that is used to store something. So Sharp KB is um, another use case. Another use case is for consistent hashing. It is similar to a key value store, but with the specialty of consistent hashing. 
then Brick is our own implementation of search engine. And we replace it with Elasticsearch. Uh, talk to me later if you're interested to know more. We actually write our own search engine server to replace Elasticsearch for very various reasons. But I don't think I can cover that in four minutes. Uh, so, so one important question is that why do we travel agent write all these things at all? Like we, re we reinvent a lot of wheels and a specialized wheel because I think, we, like I think, or our, our company generally thinks that uh, having something specialized versus something general purpose, uh, like they all come with different trade-offs. And then software development is all about trade-off. Like all about software design is about architecting, engineering, and having trade-off. And then you choose some good, better choice because well, it has, it's better for a reason. And then problem solving is also the case. You are, you are always making uh, decisions like choosing, do I spend more CPU on so when solving this problem or do I spend more disk? Do I want, uh, do I want to consume more bandwidth or do I, do I consume less bandwidth in order to have a smaller latency? Or do I store data in a normalized form or materialized form for different reasons? It's all about trade-offs. And uh, that, as, that also goes well for software development. Like this, is, this is a form of an agile manifesto. And so, in general purpose, having something that works generally means that we, have, we will have a, la a lot of layers of interactions. Uh, so if you do web programming today, this is probably your app stack. Your, your business logic is wrapped in to wrap inside web framework that is wrapped inside some virtual machine container that is hosted on a um, real machine that is placed on the rack that is placed in a data center. So, but, but, you pr but a developer probably don't see this unless, unless at some point they realize this, this is the case. So, but in, while interaction brings values, it also brings complexity. And hopefully that complexity is, can be hidden so that the value is more obvious. And uh, there's one very famous data scientist, David Wheeler. If you don't know him, this is a guy who invented the software teams. Look for his name. So he said, all problem in the computer science can be solved by adding another level of interaction, but they usually come with another problem. And a joke is made so that Oh, that's, they said that, you know, you can solve the problem by adding more interaction, unless, of course, for the problem of having too many interactions. <laughs> so, so we do specialize things because as long as we can do it with the correct assumption and, we own, and then we do only the necessary steps, we can actually break, in, break the interaction levels, make things simpler and more efficient. So that's... So that's basically what we did. So finally, the conclusion part. So I would like to conclude this talk by introducing this Chinese verb. Uh, it's called zhi ran, uh, bu zhi so yan. So this one, this one means that uh, when you see the outcome of a thing, but you don't know what uh, the cause of the thing. So, uh, so it basically means, look, I, I think a lot of uh, development today, they are they live in a world that's so convenient that they can just it's just 30 seconds away for them to have a virtual machine running their business logic somewhere, but they don't need to have to know what's going on uh, behind this. But I would like to uh, suggest it to everybody so that uh, uh, how's it? Uh, it's like you should know when you know what's happening, you should know what how it happened. So, so you, you should really try to know, know um, like one more layer, layer below, like down the stack, what's happening down the stack. So, that's all my talk. Thank you for listening. I can take questions or small questions in the car. I see one hand. You always must get to 
、シビアな形になったんですけど、どこかで公開されていますでしょうか。Oh yes, Serio, it's already published in the module.、Uh, look for it. It's, it's spelled as S E R E A L. See, that's the benefit of having a、uh, Emacs as a presenter. You can just <laughs> so,、uh, so look for this name.、Uh, it's already on CPEN for a while. There's already three ma major、uh, releases, and you can you can try to run a benchmark. There's a benchmark program in the distribution.、Um, And、we also we also release the encoder and decoder separately. So when you so if you need to deal with backward com backward compatibility, it's easier to deal with. So yes, it's already published. Anyone? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.